here I want to try to give you uh, some confirmation that all the story that I told you about perception, representation, presentation is something that you can deal with in an important way. And I am using some all the work that I did uh, 2005, hmm, long time ago. But it is about cluttering. You saw that, uh, that, that I presented you with some several examples about cluttering density, because something that I worked on with Enrico Bertini during his, his uh, PhD in, in, in Rome. And uh, the, the context is bidimensional scatter plot. Because uh, on a bidimensional scatter plot, uh, very often we have, we have cluttering. The pixel collides each other. And when they collide, you lose information about the cluster density or, or whatever. And I am really happy. Oh, and I am using still the, 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 this example about the male parts. It is, to me, very didactical because it's easy to grasp. You are familiar with it. And uh, yeah, the clustering is not re making readable this part. Hmm? And, and, um, uh, and moreover, what about density differences? Hmm? If I want to see the difference in density from here from, to here, it is easy. This is a very sparse density. Here is higher density. But what about from here and here? You not, you're not, cannot perceive that. The focus here is on density differences. Hmm? One of the things that I can perceive from uh, scatter plots is the density. Sometime, sometimes this density produces trends or clusters. Okay. Oh. And in other cases, you want just a different in density from some reason. And what makes me really happy that in 2019, so in a very recent um, time, this problem is still around. People, this is from a conference, this is the, the most important digital conference in USA, it called InfoVis, and, and um, people is still dealing with the cluster and with, with the collision of scatter plot. Hmm? And uh, they were so nice to recall our names as a pioneer in, 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 in this story. But the problem is it's still around. They work on, on a more complex situation than, 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 uh, than uh, what, what we did. We just thought about plotting these points and measuring differences. They instead worked on the idea, if I have clusters, how the overplotting affect the cluster is an additional problem. And this is typically the way in which, or you have some outliers that you can want to preserve. And this is exactly the way in which the research proceeds. Uh, most of the research that I know in InfoVis, but also about other topics, is going to go for too little increment. They built on our work and they did something better going ahead. So the, the story is still around. But I want to show you what we did because uh, it has some uh, connection with the perception. I used, we did some perceptual study for, for, our, for, our, for our story, and that will be clarify the difference from representation and presentation. That will be the topic of the next classes. And uh, first of all, the problem of the clutter is well known. And a lot of people did some attempt to solve it, still working on it. And uh, you can give to the user some comments, zoom, panning, and you can go inside. If, if I can zoom here, zooming, 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 I will discover the density differences, but I, lo I lose the overview. Hmm? Or, and I did that with, still with the Rico. Mapping collision to colors. Maybe you remember the example of, of the USA in which we have some um, color scale for doing that. Or you can do for clustering. Instead of representing all the points, you represent a cluster 
A single point represents a cluster of points. It is used, used also in, in network analysis. Here we, we, uh, we did some, used two different techniques. Pixel displacement, the idea of moving a pixel from its real position. And uh, doing some data sampling, non-uniform. Most of the solutions are about the uniform sampling. Uniform sampling is very good. Maybe I have, no, I have not, not, not a picture to show you. But uh, we introduced the idea that you used uh, several times in our research, doing a sampling that is depending from the data distribution. It is more powerful, but it's, it is easy to compute. So the idea is this one. I don't want to go too much in this detail of this. I want to stress that pixel displacement and data sampling is something that you do for presentation story. In theory, if you have infinite resolution and if you have infinite room, you can put this on, on, on a wall and you will perceive each single parcel in the end. Hmm? But this is not the reality. So this is, a, in theory, this is the, the ideal world. It is the representation world. Infinite resolution, infinite space. But if you go in the, on the screen, that will not be the case anymore. This is the presentation. All these uh, modifications are done in terms of, of the screen, on the presentation. So this is an, introdu is, is an introduction of what we will do in the next classes, how to present the data. Till now we discussed how to represent it. The encoding, the color, the scale, blah, blah. Perception. Now, how to present an off-field screen. And we did uh, a lot of work for doing that. My goal is not to go deep in it, but just to show you that uh, it is a, a formal way of working. We devised the formal model to, to characterize and forecast the clutter. I remember this uh, as a, a nightmare. It was about probability. And probability in some cases are really hard to get. You cannot, sometimes we didn't come up with the closest formula for our problem. And we have to simulate it with the computation. Formalized density, easier. Alter density to present density differences. We want to show this is different from this. Not how much is different. Only to perceive the difference. And to use the perceptual studies based on the just notable difference to see how the user perceives the, the density. Producing a, a numerical difference that is not perceived, is not useful. And uh, basically, we did some simplification. One data element will be one, on one pixel. And we have that uh, if two or more elements are going on the field, on the same pixel is for two reasons. Or they have the same values. They have three, five, three, five, the same value will be plotted on the same position. Or there are some running issues because the, the pixel size is finite. And you can have run, run the, but in any case, in the end, we have the story that we have uh, more elements on the same pixel. And that to work with this story, we split the screen in sample areas, eight by eight pixels with 64 pixels inside. A weak part of the story that uh, with the, we get this number for a JPEG compression, basically. We, we, thought, we thought that eight by eight is little enough to, to be perceived, but still a little to be uh, controlled. And here there is our plotting of our forecast. The idea, if, if, if you have, a, if you have a eight by eight pixel and you start to plot on it random points, what is the, 
Uh, here is, is, is in percentage of the pixel. If you plot a number of points that is comparable with the size of the eight per, se, per eight, basically you will have that the collision will reach the 40%, more or less, and the space available, still the black pixel will be 40% as well. And this is, it is a, um, logarithmic to, to, um, to kill all the space, basically, you need to, pl to plot six times, you see the, the free space decreasing. Typically, when you are plotting six times the number of pixels of the, the eight by eight, you will kill all the pixels inside. We have this information to do some, some simulation. This is statistical part the for forecasting the clutter. What about the formalizing density? It is really easy. Hmm? Basically, you have uh, an aperture space that is uh, measured in centimeter, and we have data density. We have uh, a square on this, two centimeter by two centimeter, one centimeter by one centimeter, and we measure how many elements are inside that, that square. And that is was data density. Hmm? It, it is about uh, represented data. It is it, an infinite resolution. If you move uh, in the real space, the area is measured in pixel, eight by eight. And the presented density is the number of pixels that are on, basically. It is, it, and you can go from zero to P. If you have a, a square like this, the minimum density is zero. All the pixels are black. The maximum is 64. All the pixels are white. You cannot go above that. If you, pick, if you plot a million of items here, the number of pixels on will be 864, eight by eight. And this is the difference between uh, Represented data and presented data. The represented data is a, is a real number, is, a, is, is an integer. One million of elements, one million. In that square, you have one million of items. In the presented data, the maximum is 64. So we have a, a clear difference between the upper space and the real space. And we call it this, let me correct it. Let's see, represent this is more, I, I discovered that the, the time I used the, the term representation and presentation not, not always in a correct way, consistent way. Represented and presented. And you have this. The presented density is less equal to the presented one. Because the represented can be any integer. The presented can be maximum 64 in the example. And uh, here we have, we have I conclude with this example. So next time we, we can go with a fresh mind very early in the morning, eight in the morning or, or Tuesday. This is, this is an aperture space. Hmm? Each square is one centimeter by one centimeter. And you can put inside how many points you want. I'm plotting the data. Here we have 46 elements, one, 11. 39, but I can have 100,000, no, no, no problem. And I want to preserve the difference in density. From year and year, there is a difference. From year and year, there is not a difference. This is my goal. I don't want to preserve the intensity of the difference. There are two contrasting tasks somehow. And here I have, uh, 
and this, the distribution. How many sample, are, sample areas contain just one element? Six. How many contains two elements? Three, four, five, till how many contain 54, 56 elements? There are five. The distribution, the number of squares that contains one, two, three, four, five. This is, a, in theory, an endless story. You can have any number. This is the representation. This axis can be as long as you want. And the number of elements inside can be as high as you want. There is no, 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 not a physical limitation. Resolution is, is, is infinite. Assume that we are going in a real space, pixel based. And for sake of simplicity, we have four by four sample areas. Each sample area is four by four pixels. The maximum of pixel we, we can have on, the density can go to zero, to 15, or let's say, no, so to, for one to 16, and now we, we are not, it's not a vector, it is a number of pixels turned on. So we can have zero, but it don't, we don't have zero. We have one here, that is the minimum, but, but zero, this is maximum 16, because we have four by four, we have 16 pixels inside. This is the, our screen, and we have to map this situation to this. This, this is a very low level problem. And if we go for the histogram uh, presenting the active pixel, the density goes from one to 16. And here we have how many sample areas have uh, 16 pixels? Four, no, five. How many have 15, 24, and so on. So this distribution of data in the representation is mapped here. And here we have the problem. Intervals for density from 31 to 56, so a, a large interval of density, is more or less half of the scale we have here, is mapped on the last three elements, 14, 15, and 19, and 16. So all these, di all these differences, that are 30 possible differences, more or less, are mapped only to values. So you are losing this information. Here, I can discover it looking at the number. Here, I don't discover it anymore. Here, here there is the, the example. Here we have 46 and 38 in the real space, in, the, in, in my representation. When I plot it on the, on the screen, we have 15 and 15. I am not able to distinguish that. And this is the, and I stop here. So I, I presented the problem. This is my problem. This scatter plot is not representing in a good way the story. One solution that I showed you, already shown to you, is using color. I can render the color of this darker than this to give you the information that in the real space we have 46 elements, as I did here. It was a density map. Here it is. You remember the example, I think. But this is an orthogonal solution. Here, I don't want to use the color. I want just to concentrate so the pixels are then on and off. And in this case, I have my solution should accommodate the point that here and here, I, don't, I should not have 15 and 15. I should have, let's say, 15 here and 10 here. To recall that this is different from this, this is higher than this. This is my, my, my goal. I want to preserve differences. And I stop here and we continue 
on, on uh, Tuesday, putting this slider on the web. Okay.